After two days, does your body get cold? I am also in an extended fast, planning to break Sunday, the sixth day. Then try a 36 hour in a week or so. The short answer overall is no. So I don't normally get cold. E word normally get cold after two days. I thought this was an interesting video because right now I'm actually planning on breaking the fast tomorrow, which is going to be a 96. And I'm actually just now starting to feel a little cold. So I figured, you know what? Maybe, hey, maybe there's some good timing to this one. So, you know, let's go for it. Why not? I'm going to go ahead and pull out the whiteboard over here. Class is in session. So, you know, I, I guess I'll break it down into like three just overall categories. So I'm just going to kind of show you the, the whiteboard over here. And I'm just going to start with like, so category one, okay? For me, category one is the one in where basically I have not. Give me one second. We'll go ahead and write down some stuff here. So like right now, so category one for me right now. So it's basically when I have not fasted or if I have fasted, it's like the kind where I'm so adapted to it that it doesn't really give me the same effect as much anymore, basically. So I'll go from not quote fasted to suddenly fasted. An example of that might be, hey, I just finished up a refeeding over the course of a week or two. So I'd be eating consistently like every single day, whether it just be once a day or multiple times a day. And then I suddenly just kind of pull it away. I go right back into the swing of like extended fast or something to that effect, right? If I do that, so basically, if I go from not fasted to then fast, in that scenario, I generally don't feel cold because usually by then my body has kind of like restabilized and refigured out everything. And usually my heart rate and like my blood pressure will be at the more, I guess, let's call it more normal ranges. Let's put it that way. And when I say normal range is normal for me and I can usually tell when I'm like breaking away from a like a consistent fasting period to like a much more, hey, let's kind of restabilize, let's kind of rebaseline, let's just make sure everything's good before we just dive right back into another swing of things. I can literally feel, I literally feel warmer because I mean, quite literally, you know, uh, uh, metabolism, you know, it's kind of going up and whatnot, quite literally. As a matter of fact, the last long fast that I did, the 14 day fast, I don't think I felt cold until like maybe like the day of or the day before. Like I went into that 14 day fast so relatively well fed that I didn't feel cold throughout most of it. I, I actually didn't. And there was a few pangs over here and there. But for the most part, I was actually quite fine. I, I didn't see it coming because I was like, wait a minute. I've actually felt cold in fast that were shorter. But then I put some dots together. It's like, wait a minute. When I have felt cold on shorter fasts, I have been swinging in and out of them pretty consistently over the period over the period of like a month or two. So like meaning I might do like alternate day fasting. So like eat one day, not the other. But yes. So like I might eat once every 48 hours. If I keep up once every 48 hours. Like if I keep it like once every 48 hours for like a month or two, eventually I do start to feel like a little cold, especially when I did like once every three days. I definitely felt cold within about a month. But I'll say it is. It doesn't take too long to kind of get the feeling of warmness again. It just means I don't I choose not to eat, you know, at that protocol. And it's kind of shrink it all down to like once a day or something like that. So in some ways, I think I just pretty much answered scenario two and three, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it down just so I can really conceptualize this on, on, on whiteboard. I was going to see on paper, like what? I'm tripping over here. So basically when I do what I consider some fasting, the answer to that one, as implied by everything, by everything that I just said is depends. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you that for some extra drama here deal depends so basically kind of like what i just said when i found myself more experimenting and just kind of seeing where i can take things and where are the limits to my body depending on certain parameters like what time of day whether i'm breaking the fast early in the morning maybe in the afternoon maybe at night whether i swing in and out 
of a, you know, 48 hour fast with this particular food, mixing up this, whether it be with octopus or onions or whatever the hell I've done in the past, I've basically noticed that the one thing, the one common denominator is if I've been eating, say between 36 hours to like two days, just once for an extended period of time, eventually I do start to feel cold. I don't really feel that with once a day. I, I, me personally, once a day, I can eat once a day and I don't feel my body trying to like down regulate or trying to like throttle things down, which then leads to that feeling of cold. And then this is somewhat obvious, but scenario three, hey, hella fasting. I'm literally going yeah, to hella fasting. Then yes, what I've been surprised to find is that when I go from, well, when I'm like hella fasting, and then, so yes, right? And before I continue, my definition of hella fasting is me pushing a new boundary that I, that I haven't pushed before. I say that because there's people I've seen on Reddit and they're, they're saying, some of them are like, yo, uh, I, I, I've got a 70 day fast under the bag. I, I've done 50 days and I'm like, golly, whoo, Jesus, fuck. Like, I, I'm not, like, I don't, I'm not there yet. I don't even know that I'll ever be able to get there. Like, I honestly think if I were to try to pull something like that off, I need to, like, gain all the weight back. I, at this point, I'm almost convinced. I need to go right back to 320 pounds, right? That way I got all the uh, extra surplus energy, right? And then, you know, go on a, you know, controlled starvation famine thing over here. But uh, <laughs> right now, at the weight that I am, it, it, it ain't happening. I ain't doing no 50 days on uh, 160, 70 pounds, Hig no, the math don't even add up. There's no way that's happening. Hell no. But regardless, for me, relative to me, when I'm more hella fasting, all right, I do start to get cold. Not only do I do actually start to get cold, I can actually quite literally see the the correlation happen happening live. So I have like this thing right here. So I you know blood pressure and uh, heart rate. And usually when I start to feel the cold, I can literally see the like my heart rate gradually like decreasing i literally like it's one of those one of the things that i track just you know for tracking purposes to see if i see some patterns and stuff you know see if i want to talk about myself right at the periods that i've gotten that i felt the most cold typically my heart rate will usually dip down to like 50 between like 40 and 50 bits uh, between 40 and 50 beats per minute Usually when I'm not feeling cold, my heart rate will be more uh, a little bit elevated accordingly. It'll usually be more between, say, 60, 70, not really 80, 60, 70, you know, and the same thing with uh, my blood pressure. So like my uh, my blood pressure will also drop as I start to feel cold. I can see that correlation every single time my blood pressure will start to kind of drop down a little bit when I'm usually refeeding or eating a little bit more than the usual just to kind of rebaseline and make sure that, you know, I don't get a check engine light that actually kills me. I can also see my blood pressure rise a little bit, not to the point that it used to be when I used to be a big old boy. See, when I used to be a big old boy, my blood pressure would be like 150, 160 ish over the other number. I don't remember what it was. It was like like 150 over like 120 of like 30 or some some shit like that. But now like my blood pressure at the lowest. So whenever I'm pushing myself a bit much than the usual right my blood pressure will dip down to as low as like maybe 89 or something over like 50 or something like that okay and then when i'm more warmed up right more recalibrated it might bounce up to like maybe between like 115 120 over well, i don't know 80 90 ish so something to that effect and it's just something that i've i've seen for myself that i've noticed when it comes to what I just said about the blood pressure, uh, listen to your body. And I say that because, and I'm going to switch things up to a different metric here, glucose uh, or blood sugar. I'm going to bring up blood sugar real quick uh, because not always, but more towards the beginning of my journey. There's this, I've seen information online where like if your uh, blood sugar level dips below I'm not sure off the top of my head it's like either 60 or 70 or something to that effect hey watch out when it comes to physical activity you might get lightheaded or something to that effect 
generally speaking, I was actually like that actually was matching up. I was thinking, oh, shit, wait a minute. Oh, okay, that actually matches up with whatever research is out there. Something's happened, though. Something's happened more recently where I've had there's been a few moments where like my glucose levels and blood sugar right it'll be oh i don't know maybe 65 or as low as almost 50 deep in the fast and i don't feel like any lightheadedness and i'll go work out and i'll flip a tire and i'll be just fine i bring that up i bring that up because just that one variable by itself doesn't seem to be like a silver bullet to then how do i say this a host of potential possibilities that may happen or not happen depending on your circumstances. And that probably sounded like a fucking word salad. I guess what I'm trying to get at here is just because I've had at times blood sugar levels that generally would indicate that I ought to not be doing certain things or that maybe I shouldn't be doing some things. I've went ahead and done certain things like working out under said conditions and i've been just fine there have been other times where it hasn't panned out as well but there's there's been times that things have been just fine so what i'm trying to get at here is now this is where i switch it right back to the blood pressure and heart rate part there's been times where i do notice that oh wait a minute so my heart rate's a little on the lower side and man i'm actually feeling quite tired maybe maybe there's something to that but then i've had times where like my heart rate is like the same number as the one time i was tired but i'm actually just fine so what i'm trying to get at here is there's this is very multi-variable so don't take any one variable and then like give it way too much weight that's what i'm trying to get at so it doesn't help anything. If anything, you might just worry yourself unnecessarily. I know that, it, it, in fact, way in the beginning, that was like, for me, fasting. I'm going to switch topics here real quick. I'm going to bring it back. Fasting for me is in some ways how I came to terms with like the death, effectively. Like I made peace with the idea of dying through fasting. Because initially, I was giving too much weight to certain conditions and parameters, and that would in turn worry me. And in that worry me, it would then lead me to feel extra stress. I could literally feel my heart rate just kind of pounding harder as I'd be worrying like, oh my God, this one thing might actually take me out, okay? And then like one night, I was walking after a meal, and I you know, felt the same thing I was feeling at the time. I think it was like my heart was just, I don't know, there's there something like a little tingly sensation or something. And I still remember just kind of thinking to myself, you know what? And I've mentioned this in a, in a previous video, but I want to mention it again in case this is your first time. But I still remember kind of thinking to myself, you know what? There was something to the effect of, you know what? You know what? If I die, I die. And, and, and when I thought that to myself, I, I, like, I, I meant it as, as, as much as I could mean it. So it's not like I just said it casually and then I just, ooh, ooh. oh, I just, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, I'm, I'm experimenting here. You know, I'm trying new things. This was at the time where I didn't know that other people at all, even fast to begin with, because I was just kind of staying inside of my own head and not really researching because I didn't, let I me mean, not go down that rabbit hole before I go down some other rabbit hole. But at, at the time, that very thought of, hey, it's all right. You know, I'm going to die someday, at least if I die right now. I have pushed myself to a point where I'm actually quite proud of this current achievement. To me, I was like, you know what? This is nice. Not only that, I had made enough progress on a self-growth level. I'm like, you know what? I've made all these improvements. I feel pretty good. If I were to die right now, how would I feel? Yeah, pretty proud. I could maybe prouder if I had achieved some other things. But you know what? The things I've achieved right now, I'm quite proud of. So, so be it. If I die I die, right? And then the very things that were worrying me, suddenly just, I, I, I was fine. All of a sudden, I was fine. And I'm like, oh, shit. Did I just accept death? Like, is, is, is that is that it? Did I just accept death? You know? And so, like, to bring it back to what I was talking about over here. So, I'm at a point where I don't let any one of these variables, metrics, like, get too much into my head because when I 
when it happens and it can still happen sometimes i might give too much weight to a variable but then it starts leading me to that weird rabbit hole where i start to worry and then the, the whole the, the shit, it'll happen all over again and i'm like okay i've been on that road i've conquered that road there's no need to keep doing it so don't worry and period like don't worry man because at the end of the day if i start hitting like a real real check engine light moment where like my body's like yo you are pushing it we didn't make it here so like the ancestor of our ancestors of our ancestors like they, we wouldn't be here if our bodies like weren't like good enough at you know giving us some kind of signaling to like be good is there somebody out there and this is gonna get a little dark i i, I don't mean it to be dark i don't mean to be a little dismissive or <laughs> kind of messed up with this but are there people that their bodies won't signal them on time yes i wish them the best <laughs> but generally speaking from a survival of the fittest perspective <laughs> you're generally gonna be okay or i think i'm gonna be okay at least i think i'm gonna be okay but i really do think you and everybody else who's watching this i think you guys will be generally okay i think deep down you're gonna know if something is you know some buttons getting pushed too hard that then leads to like, hey, we got to break this a little bit early. At least for me, when I've sort of broken something a little bit early, which was actually going to happen at that 14 day fast. I'm not going to lie. On that day, day, day number 13, I, I was really like, I may call it here because I was tired. I mean, tired, 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 tired. I can't stress this enough. I, I've, I've never felt so tired that day. And yet that was the day that I actually uh, flipped a tire like 20 times, a 200 pound tire, 20 times. And I did 120 pushups. And I actually felt somewhat tired when I was doing it. But I felt more and more energetic as I was escalating that entire workout. But overall, that day I felt you for the most part pretty tired. I just wanted to sit down. But that was like the, the, the biggest like smoking gun or something. But anyways, I, I, to, to, get, to get back on track, because I don't know what kind of rabbit hole I just went down just now. After two days, does my body get cold? Generally speaking, no. But it can. Things can get a little cold. Just not always. And that's about it. That's all I got for now. And hopefully that helps in some way. If, if you have any questions or if anybody else has any further questions, I am right here. That's about it for now. So, let's, hey, let's see what happens. I'm going to be breaking the fast tomorrow. And I'm quite excited right now. Yeah, one of the things I'm going to be having. I haven't had one of these things in a while. Or el, el platano. Something tells me this is a very stupid choice right now. But you know what? I'm, I'm going to go for it. So, alrighty. So, that's about it. Appreciate it. <laughs>